Hi everyone, in this video, I'm finally gonna show you around my new kitchen here in Nairobi. It was such a labor of love. I finished it last year, but I've never shown it. So you've got to catch this one. I've learned loads along the way as well. So interesting. And if you're designing a new kitchen, I've got some tips for you and I haven't forgotten you if you're renting. So make sure you catch this one. The original kitchen never actually worked that well for me in terms of function and I absolutely hated the way it looked. So those were my motivations for the reno. I love a good kitchen. It's everything to me because I enjoy cooking and I just love having people around serving drinks when I'm doing my thing in here. And the thing is, this space is part of the open plan living area, so it has to work. So the original kitchen, what was the main issue with it? Well, it basically ended here. So it was quite tight, it was quite small in terms of function. And if you're, you know, doing your thing in here, it didn't really work. This area was the laundry. I used to have my washing machine in, in here, but I moved that to the WC. So you can watch this video when I show you what I did there. So what, what basically meant was this was not really usable in terms of cooking. There was no window, there was like, what you call breeze blocks. So you could see through, but there was no window. Here there was a glazed door or a glass door. So that meant that if you had washing hanging up through there, you could actually see it from the dining area, which is just hectically crazy. Here you, in this video, you can see that I've actually covered the glass door with white paper, but that was basically the setup. And one thing that used to really annoy me about the kitchen was just above me here was this huge glass cabinet which basically blocked out light from the dining side and it also meant that if I was talking to someone they couldn't actually see me so it's like having to do this and then this it was just really really awkward so that had to go another issue was the dining side was quite narrow and it was felt a little cramped there was a single bowl sink so washing up was basically a nightmare especially when you had loads of dishes and i really wanted a double bowl sink and that's one of the things i was thinking about when i was doing the reno in terms of style the original kitchen was really really dated so i wanted to modernize it and make it more fresh and more in keeping with my interior design aesthetic because i didn't like the countertops i mean they were dark black and that kind of drained a lot of light from the from the kitchen because you know obviously black absorbs a lot of light so it always felt dark and dingy and the cabinet fronts didn't help either because this kind of weird fake imitation woody veneer thing is really dated and old-fashioned and again not my vibe so I was very keen to get rid of to get rid of that as well and I just wanted the kitchen to reflect more of my aesthetic the rest of my home which as you know is color popping Africa modern and I wanted that vibe to come into this space as well. So I had to think about how I was gonna do that in terms of the reno. So how did I fix the nasty kitchen? Well, the first thing I did was I moved it right back into what was originally the laundry area. I basically maxed the space and that's just made a huge difference. I put in a window, so the window now bounces light right into the kitchen so it doesn't feel dark and gloomy. I've got this ceramic sink which doubles up as my laundry sink. I can soak clothes in there, wash shoes, paint brushes, you name it. I don't put I don't do anything foody in here. It's just for heavy lifting in terms of non-food stuff. So the original door to the laundry area was here. Obviously got rid of that, but I kept a bit of the wall and I actually extended it a little bit this way because there's a store here and I took the door off the store, so I extended the wall a bit to block out that store bit. And I dropped in a, a wine rack, which I really love. I love this cool wine rack, custom-made wine rack. So that was what I did there. So by reconfiguring the kitchen, I've actually gained a lot more space in the dining area as well because now the table sits horizontally where it used to sit vertically and take up more space. That's been a big win for me. And I just love having the bar stools, sitting there having my glass of wine, my coffee, my breakfast in the morning. It's a huge game changer. Getting rid of the overhanging glass cabinet has been 
a huge, huge win because now I get light from both sides, from the dining side and the other kitchen side. And I put in the three pendants, these brass pendants, and I just add a little bit of magic to the kitchen. And I love the way they work because they also draw your eye upwards. I redesigned the, the pantry so it naturally works properly now because before it was basically a cupboard so you could never see what was right at the back and things were going off, they were expiring, I didn't know what was there so I'm also, I was always rummaging in and out looking for things but now it just works really well, I just love the way the pantry turned out my carpenter did it for me, I designed it and he did. Uh, he made it for me I've got a double bowl sink, love it, love it, love it, what a difference One of the best things I did in this kitchen, and it didn't actually cost me a lot of money, was this integrated drying rack. So I haven't got any you know, dishes on the work surfaces. They're all hidden away in the cupboard, and I think this works really well. Definitely think about this if, if you're doing a kitchen in terms of design, because it just makes all the difference. I also put in a slimline dishwasher, which I'm so proud of. I don't use it that often, but I just like to know it's there, and it just makes the kitchen feel that it's in the 21st century. So that's a huge, huge win for me as well. I've got a built-in microwave, which makes everything so much more streamlined, a built-in electric oven, because I wanted dual fuel options. I had a gas cooker, which is great, because that's fully gas. I've also put in an induction ceramic a two burner plate. In terms of style, it was so important for the kitchen to reflect my overall aesthetic, which is obviously colorful, it's bright, light. And it's got those, you know, touches of the Afro-modern going on. I decided to use a terrazzo, terrazzo, because I wanted a very thick countertop. And I wanted it to be sort of tactile and, you know, just touchy-feely. Texture is very important to me. And terrazzo was the cheapest option. So the, the kitchen countertops are terrazzo. And then I use a mixture of particle board for the, the cabinets. I designed the kitchen, but my carpenter made it. He's brilliant, he's absolutely amazing. And you've got color pops. I didn't want it to look too organized and generic. And I love the hardware, because I love the contrast between the particle board, which is quite flat, and haven't, hasn't got a lot of detail. But then the, the brass just lifts the overall look. And I continued the brass theme with obviously the, the beam pendants and then the the taps as well are brass. I love the shape of them. So I'm picking up bits of brass there. That's also how I was adding a little bit of interest to the kitchen with the brass and the mixture of textures. I changed the floor as well. Detail is everything, obviously. And one thing that was really bothering me when, when I finished the kitchen was this wall here, because it's, it's like a dominant wall when you approach the kitchen. So that's why I did this little tile detail. And it kind of echoes the mosaic on the peninsula. Again, I continue the um, mosaic as a backsplash. So it's, a, it's about repetition. I'm repeating the squares quite a lot here in terms of style. You know, you can see there's a theme going on in terms of color, sort of orange and red, and then there's artwork. I'm always talking about personalizing your spaces. And that also extends to kitchen. I wanted the kitchen to feel like part of the bigger space that it occupies and not clinical and cold. So what mistakes did I make? What lessons have I learned? The worst thing ever was I had to fire the contractor halfway through the project. It was the most stressful time, stressful and expensive time for me. I'd used him before for the cloakroom reno and he seemed fine, but he couldn't actually do a project this big in terms of the kitchen and he he said he could do it, but he couldn't do it. He was subcontracting various things. So he wasn't actually executing the stuff that I thought he was gonna do. My takeaway is be very, very sure of whoever you're gonna to use to do any of the heavy lifting in terms of renovations. I'm not sure I'd use Terrazzo again because it's so messy and disruptive. If you're doing anything to do with Terrazzo and you're living at the same time in the premises, and I was, I didn't move out. So the dust, I got a psoriasis issue and it was just honestly never ending, really noisy. Neighbors were screaming blue murder at me because it was during COVID, you know, the working from home thing. Everyone was here and the noise just kept going on and on and on. I mean, the whole render was noisy. So my neighbors, I'm surprised they're still talking to me because it was really, really difficult. But in terms of terrazzo, it wasn't, I don't think it was done amazingly well. So the cracks appearing 
you know, various areas. So I have to fix those. If I was doing the kitchen again, I just go straight for quartz. Because then you know what you're getting. In 2022, I think I'd use plywood. I wouldn't use this particle board because plywood's got a sort of more modern and timeless feel to it. But at the point when I was doing the kitchen, I wasn't sure about how it would react with water, moisture, dirt. But now you can seal it, obviously. But then I wasn't sure. I didn't want to take a risk. That's why I use the particle board. But I think I would experiment with plywood next time. So kitchen tips. The kitchen has to work. No matter how beautiful it is, if it doesn't work for you or anyone else, it's, it's failed. So think about the kitchen triangle. That's the area between the fridge, the sink, and the cooker. The idea behind the kitchen triangle is that it's supposed to help you go about your daily tasks quite easily without any obstructions. But even with this triangle, you've got to make sure that it's not too tight and it's not too big as well. Because you don't want to be walking long distances to access the cooker, sink, and fridge. Or it shouldn't be too tight so you're bumping into things. Make sure your kitchen feels like any other room. So you want to avoid that cold clinical look that a lot of kitchens have because you, should, you still need to bring your personality and your usual vibe into this space. So the easiest way to do this is to first avoid an endless run of wall units. You know those kitchens where you see doors and doors and doors and doors and doors running the entire length of the wall. Well, you don't want to do that if you want a kitchen that feels like any other room. So try and break it up in terms of size, finish, and then try and leave some areas of negative space where, you, where there's nothing on the wall. And then maybe put a, put, if you've got the room, put a piece of artwork. Open shelving works really well because then you're also showing off what you care about and the things that you love in this space. So you're breaking it up, basically break it up. Try and minimize tiling. You really don't need to tile your kitchen from top to bottom because that makes it feel cold because tiles are quite cold. So just tile the essentials, like maybe the backsplash, you know, the wet areas, and then leave the rest of it so that you can, you know, use artwork to personalize the space as well. So definitely top to bottom tiling, no, no. And then think about how you can introduce more texture into your kitchen. Because if you've, got, if you've got one flat material running the entire length of the kitchen, it's going to make it feel again very cold and remote. That's why I use terrazzo. It's such a nice warm texture because I'm, I wanted to warm up this space. So terrazzo did that really well. And then I've got the shiny cabinet doors mixed with the mat. I've got brass. So the, all of this is about introducing different textures. You can also introduce textures with accessories. As I've said, you know, before, and like things like wooden chopping boards are great, wooden spoons, cork, mats, anything, especially if they're natural, will lift your, your space and make it feel a little more, more warm and inviting. Rental tips. There's so many solutions. You know, go to Amazon or Etsy, you can get all this vinyl, removable coverings that you basically cover your ugly kitchen cabinets, you can put them on the floor as well, you know, like sort of a, a faux tile effect. And they also work on the kitchen countertops. If you're in Kenya and you're watching this, you can have the stuff shipped over. I mean, there are loads of people who bring stuff over. If you need any help with that, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll give you some deets. So yeah, you can definitely upgrade even the ugliest kitchen these days. So make sure you watch this video next because in there I give loads of tips if you're renting and how to hack an ugly kitchen. Next week's video is all about Christmas decor. I'm going to show you my Christmas tree, tablescaping for Christmas and how to wrap some presents. So make sure you catch that one as well. So what do you think of my kitchen? I'd love to hear from you. Please drop me a line in the comments and let me know. And what's your current kitchen situation? Are you renting? Do you own your, your, your home? Are you thinking of renovating it? What kind of hacks are you looking to incorporate into your rental? As always, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. Ping the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Stay inspired. I'll see you in the next one.